So um, today's guest, Andy Wiggerson from Target Recruit. Interesting talk. Um, Andy's doing something that not a lot of people do. He's bringing a US-based product to try and take over the UK, normally the other way. Um, we talk about his background, how we got involved in Target Recruit, and also things like the cult of Salesforce and his view on the market. So enjoy. So welcome to the Required Podcast. Um, haven't done one of these for a while, so it's good to get back in the chair after some summer holidays. And um, delighted to have guests on that I've known for a number of years, um, Andy Wigderson, hopefully I've got that right, who's CEO at Target Recruit. So um, Target Recruit, uh, uh, probably the CRM or ATS, if you're watching this in the UK, that you may not have heard of. Um, if you're in the US, you'll be superbly familiar, but um, I'm probably not the best to, um, to, to uh, explain all that. I'm sure Andy will do that later. Um, Andy, welcome to the show. Um, good, to, good to have you on board. Um, I guess for anyone tuning in that doesn't know you, um, just tell us a little bit about, about yourself and how you ended up in this wonderful industry of ours. Well, thanks for having me, Andy. It's a, a pleasure to see you again. Uh, yeah, my partner and I uh, worked at a software company in a completely different industry for around 20 years called CSI Software. We provided enterprise software to large health and fitness clubs in the United States and Canada. Uh, that company got sold in 2015. Uh, we stayed involved for around six months. And then after that, decided once we left that we wanted to try to find a small software company uh, that we could acquire. We obviously didn't know much, if all, about anything related to the staffing industry, but we were attracted by the company because it was built on top of Salesforce, which was very appealing to us. So we acquired Target Recruit in May of 2018, and we've been growing the business ever since. And here we are today. Fantastic. So, yeah, I mean, most people normally build these up themselves and then sell. So you, you're doing it the other way around. You've bought and you're actually building it up. So, I mean, you know, you've come from a nice industry, you know, uh, and then, then you're coming into recruiting. What, how have you found working with recruiters? Well, it's great because... You know, in the in our previous company, technology was important, but it wasn't, you know, critical to a health club success. There are a lot of factors that go into a health club being commercially viable. With the staffing and recruiting industry, you know, yes, sales and marketing is important. The people are obviously super important, but technology plays a huge role in the success of a staffing company. So working with um, organizations that really appreciate technology and are willing to make the investment in technology was a real change for us. And uh, it's been really exciting. They, they view technology as something that can differentiate them from their competitors. And that was not something we experienced in our, in our previous life. So you mentioned there about Salesforce. Um, I've, I've known Salesforce for a number of years. We built a platform at a previous um, company that I worked at um, on, on Salesforce. And, you know, we often, you know, what used to amaze me was the cult of Salesforce. So you, you said a lot of your buying decision was around, it was on Salesforce. So, yeah, tell me about that. We know from our, our previous experience, how difficult it is to build a solution on, you know, proprietary software, whether it's Oracle, SQL, whatever, uh, the amount of resources it takes to manage the infrastructure around delivering a product around the world is, is massive. So by being on Salesforce for starters, all that's basically taken care of. You know, we don't have to have an IT department. We don't have to have a DBAs on staff. We can just focus on enhancing and improving the product and Salesforce takes care of all of the delivery and we're not, you know, losing any sleep at night worrying about, you know, a server is going to go down or is the software going to be fast enough or there's security concerns. Is it scalable? All of that uh, is taken care of. So by, you know, partnering with Salesforce, we're kind of standing on the shoulders of giants and that really is a you know, major uh, plus for us uh, in terms of why we were so excited about this particular company. This typical customer, it's, you know, I'm guessing on the Salesforce platform, you're looking at sort of enterprise level. I mean, just scale, scale, scale. Yeah, I mean, um, they the product can be, you know, used by a single user, uh, but it has the ability 
to scale to thousands of users. And some of their biggest customers, in fact, are in the staffing recruiting industry in terms of users, in terms of databases. Um, so being on the platform, you know, you kind of get the best of both worlds. You've got a, what we think is a really strong applicant tracking system slash CRM, but we get all the benefits of being on the platform that we can pass on to our customers, whether it's, you know, automation, reporting, the integrations, the configuration capabilities, and the customization capabilities. So it's it's really the best of both worlds. And is that literally because any tech provider, be it comms, be it you know, email marketing, be it, I don't know, you know, backups, all of that, they all want to partner with Salesforce because you know it's the number one CRM. They have a massive ecosystem. I think there's something like 4,000 apps on the Salesforce app exchange. Now, some of them are non-native, meaning they weren't built on top of Salesforce, but around 500 of them are built on Salesforce. So being able to integrate a solution that's built on the exact same technology as Target Recruit, as you can imagine, makes that process pretty seamless. Uh, and it makes for a great user experience for our users. So that's something that you know you get as a result of being on the platform. Um, as good as the software is, I think the events are better. <laughs> um, they do put on some pretty amazing events. Um, I know uh, I've been to Dreamforce many times and uh, they have their the Dreamforce is happening again this year in September, uh, which we will be attending. Uh, they do put on amazing events. And there is, as you said, a bit of a cult uh, with Salesforce, um, you know, but for good reason. I mean, you know, they're one of the most innovative companies in the world. They're incredibly successful. They treat their partners fantastic and they're constantly you know, improving their solution. So there's a reason that, you know, there's a cult behind Salesforce. I think what's really interesting, I went to the world tour a few times um, in, in London pre, pre-COVID. What's really interesting for me to observe was that, you know, obviously the Salesforce people come and talk, but also as well, they have customers go out and talk. And the customers are just as passionate about the solution, about the product as you know, as, as the people who actually work for the organization. And I thought it was actually a really smart way of, you know, getting your message across if it's being told by someone else. No doubt. I mean, they uh, they do a fantastic job of marketing their product. Um, they do a fantastic job of supporting their their partners. Um, and, you know, it's again, you're you're you know, you're guilty by association. I mean, by being part of that uh, eco system you get just so many benefits and it, it's 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 no wonder that people are so supportive of the platform i can imagine i mean what, what you said there was interesting around dreamforce just being that so much bigger and you know the you know a lot of the you know a lot of our our members will be uk firms looking to go into the us you're a big us firm looking to come into the uk so you know talk me through that decision you know we've been doing very well in the us we have uh, I, you know, I think are the, you know, the number one ATS CRM on Salesforce in, in the U.S. We've had a lot of growth. The U.K. market is very appealing to us for a number of reasons, one of which is it's a huge market for staffing, uh, as I'm sure you know. Being on the platform, we can deliver our product globally. And we, we already had a lot of customers in the U.K. and EMEA anyway, so it's not like we don't have anyone here but we wanted to create a, a stronger presence uh, over here. Uh, I'm not over over there. Uh, and um, so we've invested quite a bit of, of capital in, in growing a team uh, and, you know, in an attempt to try to penetrate the market, but it's very competitive. There's a lot of staffing uh, and recruiting uh, ATSs. Uh, there's a lot of uh, competition, uh, but we feel we have a very mature proven product um, we have a large global company with people all over the world. And, you know, we, we have proven success, uh, mostly here in the U.S. Yeah, I mean, that that for me is really interesting that um, you, you're coming to the U.K., which you know, I, I think is a super congested market, not just in terms of there's some, you know, the really good technology, but also as well, you know, it's the, there's a lot more firms per square meter in the U.K. than certainly certainly the U.S. So how do you think? you know, the, the the process will be different or the approach for you guys? And what, what have you found so far? 
Well, it's a, it's a big industry, but it's a small industry. Everybody seems to know each other. And a lot of that has to do with the geography. Um, you know, if you compare it to the U.S., which is so spread out, it's it's important that you establish relationships with people who work in the industry uh, and, and get credibility with people who work in the industry. And that's, we feel, the way to, to get the word out. Um, we've had success with our solution, so we know it's it's successful and it works well and it can create you know strong ROI for people. But it's really a question of kind of networking and getting the name out there through you know what is essentially a pretty small network of of people. And so that's the challenge uh, for us uh, in trying to get the word out in the UK. Yeah, I guess um, it helps you've already got customers here, but actually putting you know one of a better phrase, the boots on the ground will make that real difference because, you know, I'm, I'm seeing, you know, recruitment seems to be an industry where that, that personal touch, well, I know it is an industry where that personal touch matters. I mean, you know, a lot of the talk on our boards are around, you know, people being sent to support portals where they just want to pick up the phone and speak to someone. And it, it's those type of things, those relationships really matter. So, you know, basically being able to go into demo to, you know, to, to do those initial steps with people is so, so important. Yeah, I, I don't think you can go into any market, particularly the UK market, and just like have one, one or two people there and think that that's going to work. So we've made a big investment in terms of human capital in the UK. Um, so we can meet people kind of belly to belly. Now with the pandemic, things did change a little. I don't know if it's as important as it was. Um, that, you know, we have, you know, 20 people in an office somewhere, but um, you still need to have people on the ground uh, who, who, you know, speak the same language, who have, you know, same culture. And that really makes a difference because, you know, it's a, a big part of the, the uh, buying decision is around the relationship. So um, we recognize that and respect that. So that's why we have people in the UK on the, on the ground. One of the things I always find about CRMs or ATSs, I mean, we, we use the term interchangeably, obviously, yeah, yeah. is that I think there's no perfect one, um, but certain systems are better for certain types of, of businesses. I mean, obviously, the bigger, the better. You sell more seats. Fantastic. But yeah. is there a sort of sweet spot for, um, you know, that you've identified that, yeah, we know if we're up against the usual suspects, you know, we're in, a, we're in with a strong, strong chance on this. I think, you know, if you look at most modern CRM slash ATSs and you look at basic what we typically call front office capabilities, search, matching and placing candidates, there are a lot of great products. There, yeah. there are a lot of great products out there. Uh, and I think if you're looking at it just strictly for front office, you know, you're probably going to pick a vendor that has a, a nice UI and is very reasonably priced. If you're looking for middle office capabilities, and by that I mean pay, bill, things of that nature, I, I don't know if all systems are created equal. And I we find that we tend to do pretty well when the middle office comes into play. But where we really excel is if if there is a interest in the platform, if people are also evaluating not just the solution, but the platform. And when that happens, we think we're in great great position because again we're on salesforce and so there are a lot of things you can do with the platform that you might not be able to do with other vendors and that's where we typically do well and that is typically what our you know our sweet spot when we're talking to a, a firm yeah i guess i guess it's going from a system to a platform i think i've heard that sort of described about salesforce and dynamics as well that you know, you, you, you're basically moving to the ecosystem, you know, it's, it, it ceases to become as industry specific, as, you know, general, but all of those sort of, you know, those plugins, those broader things become available. Yeah, I think you, you actually said to me, and I've heard this from a few people, a CRM is a CRM is a CRM, right? I mean, they kind of all do the same thing to a certain extent. Every vendor probably has four or five cool things they do that maybe the others don't do. But are you going to make a buying decision based on that? Maybe, probably not. As you get into the bigger firms, for sure, it's, it's not just about the UI and what is the cheapest product. So again, where we excel, where we do well is if, if we're talking about things around the platform, which, you know, if I look at all the discovery calls we've done, the hundreds, thousands we've done, 
of customers with other products and what their pain points are. It usually comes down to things that are solved by the platform, reporting, automation, yeah. configuring, those type of things. So yeah, that's where we do well. So it's basically all baked, all baked into one. So yeah, I think I think that you know the, the analytics on Salesforce, I do remember being super cool. And you know, yeah. you know and yeah. Yeah, recruitment obviously being a very KPI driven in a lot of industries, in, in a lot of firms still, having those immediate ability around the analytics was super cool. Um the other thing that's really exciting was all of the AI stuff that they're bringing with that was really starting to come through now as well. And and how you could apply that to searching, to matching, to communications, to outreach. I mean, we, we've just got to be at the, you know, and I keep thinking that someone's going to break through with this, but I guess it's a lot more likely going to be one of the platforms. Yeah, AI is an interesting subject. I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, it's hot, then it kind of cools down and it, it gets hot again. Um, I don't know if anyone's really mastered AI yet in this industry. Um, with Salesforce, they have a product called Einstein, uh, which does a few things around AI. But I wouldn't even go as far as to say that it is a true working AI product. And I don't know if there's really anything out there that is. Uh, we do incorporate Einstein into our solution. We also have our own AI, if you will, built into the, the product. But I don't know if anyone in this industry has truly come up with a an AI tool. So what's the plan for the business? Because everyone else seems to just, you know, grow one of these and then sell it. So um, you, you've done, you're doing it the other way. So are you going to be potentially acquiring people and bringing them in? Or are you going to be just, you know, just go all guns blazing and I guess get your ARR up to the point where some, <laughs> someone someone makes you an offer that's too good to be true. Well, you know, I, I, I get the, asked that question a lot and I, my answer is every business is for sale for the right price. Now, having said that, um, we are not looking to, to sell this company. Um, we're not, you know, we're not backed by any VC or private equity there's no time horizon out there where we, you know, we have to sell in five or six years to return capital back to the investors. Uh, we are actually looking to make a couple of acquisitions ourselves right now, uh, other Salesforce based solutions. Okay. And we're looking to just grow the business. Um, you know, we're looking to just, you know, have fun, grow the company, uh, sell to more customers. And, and, and that's really our only plan right now. And that's all I can say on that subject. Um, Fantastic. No I think you just put the price up by not, not appearing to need to do it. A few million. <laughs> Excellent. Well, well done. Um, so how are you finding the market at the moment? So obviously it's interesting times. You know, the, the world seems to be hitting the brakes hard and yet the yeah. war for talent seems to be as strong as ever. What are you seeing over there in, in Houston? Well, it was, it's been a great year. I mean, Last year was was pretty solid. This year has been really great. Um, I I talked to a lot of our customers who saw a bit of a dip starting around April, but I've also heard that it's starting to come back uh, pretty strongly. Um, we um, do sell our solution to a lot of healthcare staffing companies, which I I, I think is not maybe as big in the UK as it is here in the US. Uh, because of you know private medicine and, and things of that nature, but um, we've had a lot of success with some of our healthcare staffing companies because you know, obviously with the pandemic there was a huge need for nurses and travel nurses, etc. Uh, so things have been going really well, and um, again a bit of a dip uh, from what I understand from our customers in April May, but things have been holding steady since, and I I don't know how long this is going to last. Uh, but so far, uh, here we are into to August and things have been going really well for us and more importantly, really well for our customers, certainly based on the number of additional users that they've been adding throughout the year. Yeah. So, I mean, are you seeing that as a global thing or very strong in the US and yeah, or are you just seeing that across your global customer base? Most globally, but, you know, especially here in the US. I mean, I think um, all of our customers have been doing well. 
um, globally, but I think the U.S. market has been particularly hot uh, for staffing and recruiting. And um, yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of our customers adding users. Uh, we've obviously signed a lot of customers this year. Uh, so things have been really strong for us, uh, particularly in the U.S. market. And there doesn't seem to be any signs of things slowing down you know, significantly. Um, what would be your advice to anyone sat in the UK now thinking about coming to the States, doing it the other way from what you've done? So UK recruitment businesses looking to you know, start, what, what would your advice to them be? Well, I'm really amazed at how many companies have actually done that. Um, we're talking to more and more UK companies or sometimes US companies that, you know, we didn't even know that their their head office is actually in, in the UK or Europe. There are a lot of opportunities uh, for companies here, I think you have to specialize in, in, in a particular market to be successful. Uh, and, the, you know, certainly if I look at our customers, uh, the ones that have focused on, you know, a few verticals uh, to staff have been incredibly successful. I know, for example, in healthcare, I mean, we have customers, all they do is travel nursing. That's all they do. And they they're killing it, right? Um, so my advice, and I'm you know, I'm obviously on the technology side, so I don't profess to be an expert on running a staffing company. But um, there's a lot of opportunity here, and I think specialization is is critical to being successful in this in this market. Yeah, I think I think it's the golden rule for anything, isn't it? Get really good at you know what you do, stay in your lane, you know, let everyone else worry about that, and then you know, just double down on that on that success. So what was what was really interesting to me as well is we obviously have the required network in the UK and by all accounts there's not really the similar types of networks in the US as well. So you know when we were talking earlier, you know it was around the you know when you came on board on the partnership, you know sort of you know I think it was in the US where you've got SIA and that's pretty much it. So I mean from I guess from from our perspective, you know. Is there the you know the room in the states should required be you know really getting our U.S. chapter up and running and yeah, and pushing that? Yes, you absolutely should. Um, there there's there really is not a lot of networking groups over here in the U.S. Uh, I don't know why that is. Um, you pretty much you know have to go to these large trade shows, which are very expensive, and if you want to have any kind of presence uh, to get the name out. Uh, so, you know, that's on the, on the vendor side, um, but there's not a lot of groups that I'm aware of uh, that do what your your company does over in, in the UK. And, I, you know, that would be all, you know, awesome if, if, if you were to do something like that. What, what was interesting for me about the trade shows is it's not only expensive to exhibit, to attend is... <laughs> Yeah, there's yeah. that too. <laughs> I remember what yeah. you were saying when you get you're going to one of these events. I'm like, that sounds interesting. You know, maybe you know, cost me a plane flight in a hotel. And then I looked at what it would be to go. And I'm like, no, nah, maybe not. Not budgeted that one this this year. But I, I guess it's like everything in the states, isn't it? It's always bigger and better. And you know, um, I, I won't ask you what it costs to. Uh, are you attending Dreamforce or exhibiting there? We are only going to attend. We're not going to have a booth there. That is that is crazy expensive. Yeah. Um, That's unless you have a whole next level. Unless you have a horizontal solution that services you know general industries, it's it's not worth the cost. But I will say um, the, the companies, organizations here that put on events for staffing and recruiting do a phenomenal job. So yeah. you know you, you kind of get what you pay for, right? Hundred percent. There's. There's, there's definitely a reason for that as we as we show yeah. um well i think i think what's really interesting is is going to be how you you know go about cracking the market because you know we, we we've had the established people here for a number of years so you know you're not really a new entrant but it's a new sector for you or a new segment or a new geography for you so it'll be interesting to see how you play against you know those I wouldn't necessarily call them incumbents, but you know the you know the names that everyone would 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 recognise. So, I guess it's logically making sure that you're always on that um, you know that that first initial um, RFP, um, mm -hmm. and then you know ultimately it goes it goes from there. I guess. Yeah, I mean we compete uh, against you know the the biggest company in the industry. I think we all know who they are. Uh, uh, you know here in the US on on a lot of our deals. And, you know, we've obviously had a lot of success 
Um, a lot of the players in the UK aren't as well known here, uh, so we don't really come across them. Uh, but we feel um, because of the product offering and being on Salesforce, we can we can uh, offer this solution to, to any company wherever they are in the world. And um, you know, uh, the UK is no different. So yeah, we feel pretty good about our offering and our ability to differentiate between all the other vendors. That are playing uh, in the in this particular space in this market. So, if we're doing this call in a year's time, what does success look for you like for you? Uh, you don't you don't have to give us raw numbers or ARR, but um, you know. But what would the tenants of success be for you? Well, we're we're hoping to hit a hundred employees, uh, full time employees, by the end of this year. So that's that's a big milestone for us. Um, we want to see you know some bigger market share with the the top staffing companies. You know, in this market in the US market and we've you know we've been having a lot of success there. So that would be you know another goal of the company. And you know just product um innovation. I mean we're we're looking to do a lot of things with the product and we have you know kind of a roadmap um and you know timeline of what of what we want to do and when. So being able to accomplish that uh would be you know very satisfying for us. So so those are some of our our immediate goals. Well, um, it's certainly an exciting time. I think you're ex you're entering an exciting market with a, you know, you know, an exciting platform. So you know, it'll be interesting to see how the you know the I think the UK is probably the toughest market on the globe. So it'll be interesting to see how you how you fare and um, you know certainly keep us updated. Um, Andy, if anyone wants to find out more about target recruit or find out about you um or you know or who's playing dreamforce this year how can they get how can they contact you well the best thing would probably go to our website targetrecruit.co.uk and uh all the contact information is there um you can also find us on linkedin uh that would be the best way to reach out to us if you want to speak to us about our solution fantastic and i guess I guess the other thing is as well, it's generally for people who are not necessarily looking to change right now. You know, these these platforms are long term capital investments. So, yeah. you know, I guess I guess your sales cycle is pretty long. So I guess you want to be having conversations with people who are looking in the next years as opposed to months. Yeah, absolutely. It's a long sales cycle. Uh, a lot of boxes have to be checked uh, before someone's willing to, you know, uh, switch their CRM. So we we're we understand that and we're we're very patient. Uh, and you know, we love the opportunity to show anyone interested what our solution looks like. Fantastic. Right. So for anyone listening, um, you know, Andy's Andy's just not interested in the quick sale. He'll chat to you for as long as you need. Right. That's good. As long as you need. <laughs> right. Well, it's really good catching up again. Um, as um, one of Required's latest partners, we're really excited about introducing you to our membership and you know, helping you along the way. And also as well, you know, maybe maybe just shaping the product maybe for the UK and any sort of feedback we can give you. So, um, yeah, all the very best and uh, we'll definitely catch up soon. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Thanks a lot, Andy. Cheers, Andy.